Hey guys, it's Ben Ferriolo. I'm back. Um, this really wasn't going to be an official video. I'm working on my video uh, that I'm going to upload tonight about Friday Harbor's earthquake swarm that recently happened uh, a few days ago. And also the new thermal area that was discovered at Yellowstone. So keep an eye out for that video. It should be up tonight. should be up tonight. But I just want to let you guys know what is going on, guys. First off, we did have another earthquake near Friday Harbor. Just one. I believe it was just one. And then we did have, let's scroll up, here's California, by the way, on the Cascadia subduction zone, we did have a 4.7 at supposedly 10 kilometers in depth. Don't know if the depth was constrained very well. And apparently, let's see, four people reported feeling it, and they actually do have a moment tensor for this magnitude 4.7. But let's go back, shall we? That's not what I'm interested in. Uh, what's this right here? Huh, that's interesting. Here, let me go down. Let me turn terrain on real quick. That's the Olympic Peninsula of Washington State. Guys, if you live in Washington State, you know where this is. By the way, again, we did have an earthquake at 1.7 at 12.8 kilometers in depth at Friday Harbor. But, but, and a big but, other event. They are reporting. You So remember how in Hawaii they had those deep, long period, high frequency events? Remember how they were labeling um, about 80% of them as other event, just like this. Notice how it says a magnitude 2.1 other event, not an earthquake, not an explosion, not a quarry blast. Other event is reserved for events that don't make any sense and really do not fall into a quarry blast category, an explosion category, an earthquake category. You know what I'm trying to say? So really, it's for kind of like exotic events, kind of. It, kind of like the deep, long period, high frequency events in Hawaii. Those are quite exotic. So I thought this was very interesting. At negative 0.8 kilometers in depth, but this is just on the southern portion of the Olympic mountain range. So it's very, the elevation is very high. So it still did occur underground. If the depth is correct, it still did occur underground because zero kilometers in depth exactly is sea level. So... Again, they're reporting a magnitude 2.1 other event for the Olympic Peninsula, and this is the first one I have ever seen. I have ever, ever seen. This is highly unlikely to be a quarry blast. I do not think, I mean, obviously they do do some maybe lumber explosions or quarry blasts every, here, every now and then on the outskirts of the Olympic Peninsula, but we shouldn't really see them that often, guys. And plus, they always label them as explosions if PNSN thinks it's an, it's an explosion. This is labeled as other event, and I'm trying to find the satellite. There we go. There we go. Let's zoom into the possible epicenter, shall we? Nothing, guys. There's, I, and I pretty much guessed this right off the bat. There's nothing around here. This area of the Olympic Mountains is very, very, uh, very remote, guys. There should not be any explosions any mining in this area there shouldn't be at all you know maybe they might blow out the side of a small hill or something every now and then but this is not an explosion you can tell it there's nothing even near here no quarries nothing at all i don't even see any civilization for miles actually okay so they're reporting at magnitude 2.1 other event at negative 0.8 kilometers in depth i want to see what this looks like on the seismic data why are why are they calling it other event instead of an explosion instead of an earthquake what made what caused them to say that this is other event again this is provided by usgs and the pacific northwest seismic network as you can see right down here now they are saying the depth is negative 0.7 kilometers in depth okay so a little bit what what would that be a little bit deeper no a little bit shallower so we're going to get a good look at what this magnitude 2.1 other event under the Quinault Census designated place, which is basically the Olympic Mountain Range in Washington State, which is where I live. Well, I don't live in the Olympic Mountain Range. I live 20 miles northeast of Seattle. I'm in Washington State too, guys. I'm in right in earthquake country. But really, even though I'm right in the smack dab of earthquake country, I've only felt two earthquakes in my lifetime. One being extremely weak and the other one being the Nisqually earthquake. And I'm pretty sure some of you listening to this probably experienced the Nisqually earthquake. It was very strong, traveled very far. Many people even in eastern Washington felt it. But man, I remember it. Our chandeliers were just, I swear to God, they were smacking the ceiling back and forth. I mean, it was, it was a strong earthquake and we were far from the epicenter too. Sorry guys, I'm getting off topic. 
PB borehole 014 in the PB network short period vertical let's use the station uh, apparently USGS is saying the according to the arrival times that borehole 014 is the closest seismic station so I will gather the data and we will take a look at this magnitude 2.1 other event which now they are saying occurred at negative 0.7 kilometers in depth which still means it still occurred underground because the elevation there is very high Apparently, it occurred at 9.59 UTC on April 10th, 2019, so I believe that was last night, so let's check it out. Here we are in the Seismic Program Swarm. I got the most recent data stream the past 24 hours or so, probably a little bit less than 24 hours, from Borehole 014, short period vertical, in the PB network, no location code given. P turn persistent rescale off, I got uh, uh, the overlap set to 95 for the spectrogram. I'm not going to do a filter because it's short period vertical. I do not need a filter right this second. So up here we see normal background activity, normal background activity. Don't know what the heck this was. This was at the beginning of the data stream right here. But let's move forward, shall we? Actually, that didn't work out very well. Let me just pan down. Remember this borehole 014, supposedly the closest seismic station to other events. The other the event that recently occurred, remember this one right here? Let's see, the other event occurred at 959 UTC. So we're going to get a good look at it right here, 959 UTC on the 10th. We do have on the UTC side, the 10th right here. 959 UTC is going to be right here. Okay, we do see it. Here it is. Let's see, shall we? Let's zoom all the way in. Okay, so why did they label it, uh, label it as other event, guys? Huh? This looks like an earthquake. This legitimately looks like an earthquake. However, I must state something though. I think I do have an idea why. Notice from right here, 959.50 to 959.51. This is one second. That is very quick, guys. Very, very fast. That is very, very quick. Even from right here to right here, it's only 10 seconds. So this lasted not that long at all only a few seconds guys which in my opinion doesn't make sense for any earthquake at all let's go to the max frequency of the spectrogram and set it to 55 it'll only go to 50 hertz but that's okay this almost looks like an explosion but it cannot be in my opinion it traveled too far and the coda lasted too long i i do not think this is an explosion guys i highly highly doubt it but again here right here is the magnitude 2.1 other event labeled by USGS and PNSN. Supposedly, it was a magnitude 2.1. Adds negative 0.7 kilometers in depth. Let's check out the spectra plot. Yeah, strange frequencies, guys. Strongest frequency was 4.6 hertz, but we see weaker frequencies going well beyond that, obviously. Let's go back to this uh, the waveforms, shall we? So again, this was very strange and does not look like it was an explosion. I highly doubt it was. This looks like a natural event. But I can kind of see why they are labeling this as other event. It really doesn't make much sense, guys. And then right afterwards, there is an aftershock of the same type of event. Do you notice that? Almost the same carbon copy event, except it's, I'm going to say, a hundred times smaller. <laughs> I mean, it's much smaller, guys. Probably maybe a magnitude 0.5 aftershock. But these two could be earthquakes. But I don't know exactly what process could cause an earthquake exactly like this. Very strange, guys. Very strange characteristics. I do kind of see why they labeled it as other event. They might change that in the coming days. Maybe eventually they'll label it as an explosion or an earthquake. I don't know. We'll just have to keep an eye on it. Just keep an eye on earthquake.usgs.gov and also keep an eye on the PNSN website. They're going to be also doing a blog post soon about the, uh, um, the coming possible ETS event this summer. And down here we see this event right here. This is the magnitude 4.7 that occurred off the coast of Oregon on the Cascadia subduction zone. The one if you could play Pacific Plate, actually. Let's go right down. Let's see, this occurred at... 4.7 occurred at 14.11.31. Takes a few seconds to travel this far. 14.12.40, yes, this is it. This is the magnitude 4.7 off the coast of Oregon. Looking through the data, I'm not seeing anything else indicative of more earthquake activity. But again, this is the magnitude 2.1 
other event. Guys, keep an eye out for my next video, which will likely be out tonight. It's going to be about the Friday Harbor Earthquake Swarm and the new thermal area discovered in Yellowstone. I know a lot of people have been talking about the thermal area in Yellowstone, and it might be old news by now because everyone's been talking about it like crazy lately. But who would I be if I didn't at least report on it once? I mean, come on. <laughs> so keep an eye out for that. That should be out soon. See you later, guys.